Today in this lecture, I am going to share you guys certain tips related to true false and not given which might definitely help you guys to overcome the problem of when to write down false and not given. Let's see the tips related to the true false and not given. There is same technique whether it's true false or not given or yes no and not given there's not much of a difference mostly in the examination the yes no and not given is asked which is related to the writer's point of view. The second tip is answers are in order most of the time that is you are going to find the answer in systematic way 99% of the cases. That means that if you find the answer for first true false and not given in the first paragraph then the answer for second question might be either in the next paragraph or it might be in the same paragraph but next line. Got my point? So if suppose in the first paragraph if you find the first answer in the fourth line the next question you might find the answer either in the fifth line or the next body paragraph. Okay, so you need to be very clear about it. Now the most important tip is read the question properly and try to understand it. Don't press the panic button in the examination because if you do not understand the question then we are definitely perplexed what to find in the passage. Now many students come to me and they say sir I am from commerce stream and passages related to the science background right are quite tough difficult to understand. I just tell them one thing passage might be difficult it's perfectly fine even if you do not understand 70% of the passage but the most important thing is to understand the question. Because understanding the question will help you to scan that is to locate your answers in the passage. Right? We just need to read few lines and based on that we need to understand it. Now even if there are certain technical terms or even if the language is quite complex we are unable to understand it. It's perfectly fine. Even if you understand 25 to 30 percent of the passage we are good enough to score above 34 in the reading module and this is not the statement that you know I am making up in the air that is practically proved by many of my students who are unable to understand the passage but still they are able to get a very good score in the reading module. Now the next tip is now read two questions at a time. Uh, that means you know when we are in the examination there is a lot of stress. So what we can do is the first question definitely it would be in the first paragraph or the second paragraph but sometimes we might find the answer related to the first question that is in the fifth body paragraph and by the time we have read this for all the four body paragraph we would be under tremendous pressure either I am unable to understand the paragraph or I am unable to find the answers and you will definitely doubt your abilities in the examination. Now what will happen is if you read two questions at a time that is the answer for first one might be not given then the answer for second one we can say that okay first one might be not given if the second one we find out the answer in the second body paragraph and it's false. So that means either we have missed out the first one or it's not given. So it's that simple. So the second question actually is like a signposting for us. If we found the answer for this maybe we have missed the first question or the answer is not given. Keep things simple the exam is going to be very easy. If you are under a lot of stress then the situation would be quite tricky in the exam. The fifth tip is you must match the meaning of the sentence not the keywords. 
Now there are many students who come, so everything, whatever is there in the sentence, it's there in the paragraph, right? So why not it's true? See, the thing is, even a single word can change the whole meaning of the sentence. Let me give you guys an example. If you want to participate in Bollywood movies, you need to give your audition via digital link. After this first audition, then you need to physically present and give the rest of the auditions. Now in the question, if it's mentioned that all the auditions for the Bollywood movies are to be given via digital link. Now if you see now, everything, digital link, Bollywood movies, audition, it, it is matching, right? If you match the work keywords, everything is going to be matched. And as a result, most of the students would write true. But all plays a major role. All means everything. And of course, another tip is synonyms. Synonyms are vital in the IELTS examination, whether it's listening, reading or writing. It will help you to find out the answer, to locate the answer correctly. And as the example I have mentioned, you guys need to be aware of the trap words, all, only, most of, majority, right? So put an emphasis while you are reading the question. This type of words can completely change the context of the sentence. Now this one is the most vital tip. Everyone knows that false means contrasting statements. But still there is a lot of confusion. Now contrasting statement means there is opposite. If I say I attended yesterday's wedding. Right? So it's in simple form. I attended yesterday's wedding. So what would be the contrasting statement? I haven't attended the wedding. Right? So if you add not or no, that is negative to this, to the statement in the question, you will definitely know what to find and whether you should write false or not given. I'm going to give you a certain examples related to this one later on. But see, please understand a single word not in this statement will help you to identify whether you should write down false or not given.